Welcome! The following video is meant for informational purposes only. The video depicts a parent advisor performing an initial communication evaluation on an ECI child suspected of needing her services. A parent advisor is the teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing who contracts with early childhood intervention to perform auditory services to infants and toddlers in their home. So, my name is Wendell Rood and I am a teacher with Fort Worth ISD who specializes in auditory impairment. Part of what I, we do, we do also serve our outside school districts, like I, I had said initially, White School and ISD, so, for our parent infant program. Um, what I want to do is give a little information on Kaden, if that's okay. Notice how Gwen, the parent advisor, has come prepared to the evaluation. Gwen has also made sure she has been given the most current medical documentation available. Gwen has already reviewed the material and will be able to confirm the reports and ask questions necessary to fill in any informational gaps. So, what I have, I know there's been some changes. <laughs> But we had thought that the right we had more of a mild to moderate loss, and then on the left side was more severe to profound loss. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So one side was better than the other. Obviously, yes. right better than the left. Mm -hmm. um, now, interesting. Rachel had contacted me and said the hearing thresholds were significantly improved. Yes. Okay. So they, um, well, he went and got an MRI in November. And they did a, tip, a hearing test. Mm -hmm. So they said that the left ear had normal hearing, and the right ear was the conductive hearing loss. So the right, and so it had, they wanted to retest him. Yeah, yeah. They wanted to retest him because he had drainage uh, coming up their right side. But both of them are draining now, and he's still on drop. So after they clear, they're gonna do another hearing test. And they okay. said to hold off wearing the um, hearing aids. So they're thinking that that right side loss that still remains might have been due to all that fluid. Yes. And they're still waiting for it to drain. Yes. So when he had the MRIs, the hearing test that they did was while he was having the MRI, was it called something called an auditory brain stem response? An ABR? ABR, yes. 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 And you said that was December? No, November. Oh, no. November. When did they discover, prior to that, when did they discover the, um, the other hearing loss? Discovered a hearing loss. Yes, because he had um, went in for tubes to get tubes, his uh, ear tubes, and they did a hearing test before and after. And then he had a hearing test again. And then this will be his third hearing test. So the first ever hearing test that showed a hearing loss yes, was, was in, in October of this year. So the second one that I found um, was 9-18 of 17 by Kelly. Okay. And then the second one is in October. Ah, you're ga ga ga. Very good. Make it like ga ga sound. Ga ga. How is he? Um, those combinations like a ga ga or maybe a ga ga. Yeah. Any of those that are easy to do. I want to say maybe five of them. He'll say this. And this. Oh, okay. So, is it okay? What I want to do is um, I'll go ahead and have you. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions about Kate's communication. 
Written parental consent provides documentation that the parent has been informed of and agrees in writing to the proposed action. Consent is voluntary and can be withdrawn by the parent at any time. Any action for which the parent has withdrawn consent must be stopped immediately. Remember, you must get signed parental consent prior to performing any evaluation. Okay. Um, basically what he understands, what he's able to express. Okay. Uh, do you need to get your consent to go ahead and do that? Okay. But I, can, I can get do it on this handy dandy ECI one that, you know, we just all love to suffer. Yeah, you. no, I'm a permit right now. I, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this first part is just going to be basically what we understand. Okay. Will um, can respond to his name when he calls yeah. most of the time? Oh, yes. Oh, is he doing any kind of, are you doing any kind of sign language or, okay. So everything is listening and spoken language. Yes. Okay. Um, does he know when strangers are present? Maybe yes. he's a little nervous? Yes. Does he stop crying when someone communicates with them using words? Yes. Uh, does he know the difference between angry um, faces or voices? Angry and friendly. Does he get a little nervous if you get a little bit more firm? Where'd you go? Him? Where'd you go? Uh, I don't know. I haven't really experienced it. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Oh, concept of no-no. Yes. Okay. He yes. understands that concept. Yes. Does he listen? Does he listen? <laughs> he understands if I get a lot of no. Okay. Yeah. How about recognizing the names of some family members? Yes. So like mama. Caden recognize words such as bye bye, come, up, sit, yes. like. Oh, oh, why? Back here. Not back here. Does he recognize me? No. <laughs> I know it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if he say wave bye bye, will he attempt to wave bye bye? No, he'll uh, try to make him crash over and say. Up, 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 please. Okay. okay, he has an object in his hand and you uh -oh. want him to give that to you. That to you most of the time. No, he'll throw it. He'll throw it. How about when his name is called? Like he's just having some fun, doing some things, and you say, Caden, will he stop and kind of look for where that sound is? Yeah, so you can tell he's listening in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing a sustained cooing sound. I've got to hear that a lot. Um, and then the two syllables. And he's making sounds from his. Yes. Um, well, he vocalized to social stimuli, so you start vocalizing to him, and he starts kind of vocalizing back. Um, doesn't have to match what you're saying. He's just yes. vocalizing yes. back to whatever. Yes. Right. Um, so we have. Does he make the B sound like a ba 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 ba? Mm -hmm. Ma 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 ma. Yes. So he's sitting there babbling, going ga 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 ma 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 ma. Talk to him. Will he stop yes, his battle? Yes. How about feelings of pleasure or displeasure? Does he vocalize that? He's mad. He might get mad. Yeah, he'll scream. Yeah, he'll scream. He'll yeah. let you know. So you see that little ah uh, that he's doing? He's happy. He's vocalizing. Notice how Gwen asks mostly open-ended questions. An open-ended question is designed to encourage a full, meaningful answer using the subject's own knowledge and or feelings. An open-ended question is the opposite of a close-ended question, which encourages a short or single word answer, such as yes or no. Oh, come so he makes sounds while he's alone. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Will he attempt to imitate pitch changes? Like if you go up, up, up. Will he try to go up, up, up? Yes. There we go. <laughs> so I have a question. But, uh, AI, what is that for? Like, AI. Like, what do you, what are you going to do? Right. So what we're going to do, what I, I do is kind of, we're kind of like your, your guy, basically, okay. in this whole process. The so role is typically a parent advisor. Okay. So I will come in. I mean, if, if you want, if you yeah. want my services, yeah. come in and what I'll do is I'll give you, I usually always have a lesson and it might be something, I always start out with hearing loss and its implications. Then we're going to have an activity. 
I'll do the activity with Kate, and what I had, what I have my parents do is then take over that activity. Okay. Because if you don't know how to do that activity, it's yeah, because I'm only here, you know, for 45 minutes. Okay. So, um, so how do you get take over work on that? And then you can tell me how that went the next week or the next okay. time we see each other. Um, then also, we also guide you through the transition process. So okay. when Caden gets close to his third birthday, yeah. um, I'll help guide that process. And then also, if you have audio appointments, um, ear, nose, and throat doctor appointments, I can go with you to those. Okay. Yeah. So, or we can, you know, and if you're if that type of thing, so I can do that, and then I can also kind of go over those reports with you. The role of a parent advisor can and should extend past the front doors of a client's home. Parent advisors are there to support the child and the family as a whole. A parent advisor may plan to go to audiological appointments and or other appointments when requested by the family. A parent advisor may need to explain medical documentation and also assist with the transition process. Also one of the things that I talk to my families about are communication options. Uh -huh. um, I like to be very non-biased in that. So what I do is I talk about listening and spoken language using speaking. And then I also talk about different types of sign communication. Um, just And within all of that, <coughs> there's a lot of systems with it. So I, I go over all of that with the families. So there's okay. just a lot of information that I can kind of break down in different sessions to where it's not going to all like you yeah, so what I like to ask my family is, where do you see Caden, say, in the next six months? What would you like him to be doing with regard to his communication? Um, just communicate, really, because we communicate with him whining and crying. I try to encourage Caden to use his words. And um, even though I understand what he's saying, I just try to, like, try to encourage him to speak his words. And, um, I don't know, maybe not speak in a full sentence, but at least just um, tell me what he wants. Like maybe it's just like a single word that's, I mean, that's better than one. A single word. So yeah. something something that he can meet his needs yes. using his language. Yes. Okay. So like maybe during the feeding routine, knowing that he wants, I don't know, cereal rather than. Yeah, yeah, or when he's done, say all oh, done instead of like instead of like ah yeah yeah because yeah, he'll do that, but he he wants his cup. Okay. But I'm like, okay, then say cup. You want your cup? Cup. But he's like, ah. I'm just like, okay, all right. But he is making a vocalization when you prompt him, right? There's some kind of vocalization. Yes. Oh, yeah. So what we can do is work with within the routine and say, oh, I heard you, up, uh, up, uh, cup. You know, so we can go ahead and get that information to him and say, hey, I heard what you said. And then you just kind of say the, say the correct one, mm -hmm. the word to him, just to affirm that he has, but without saying, oh, that's not correct. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, okay. so how many words would you like? So words like, you could say cup, yes. maybe a couple of objects, cup, sleep, like I'm tired, sleepy maybe. How about a favorite object, like a toy? Yeah. So um, like, which um, one? Um, uh, I just have to name them. Yeah, oh, okay. ball. Yeah. Or, just, or anything, or just favorite toys. His favorite toy. Yeah, yeah. He reacts better with balls. He likes that. Yeah, the, the big, those bigger ones that are kind of like those tangled toys. Those like mm -hmm. touch so You can kind of even maybe yeah. brainstorm through yeah. creating like special names. So like whenever he had his pacifier, it was his friend. So over time, maybe kind of. I've never heard that. Was that. Was your friend. Yeah. 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 He, he knew. Um, so now you kind of brainstorm it. You can call names like this. I don't know, okay. Different trampoline. Thing. Jump, jump, jump. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe different names. Okay. Think about different names, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, as far as my services, how often are you thinking you would want me to come to the home? We come anywhere between four times a month. We can do two times a month. We can even, we can do one time because I know schedules can be pretty much. Oh, I work at night. We can do um, four times, like once a week, right? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. I'll kind of go over what my results came out as far as communication, so we kind of have an idea. So, with this, this particular test, 
basically you have to get over half of the, after, he has to get over half of the competencies before we move on to the next unit. Okay. On Caden's receptive language, what it showed was he was at four to six months when he's able to understand that age range. But then it was interesting on the expressive language, he's coming up at eight to ten months. He's doing a lot of battle and things like that, so I think that's kind of what got him there. Um, it is a little interesting in the fact that he's there seems to be a gap. Yeah. Because typically they understand it more so than they're able to express it. Okay. So we want to work with him understanding what he's hearing. Okay. So and then you oh. know, yeah, okay. and then and then we can move on. So yeah, so there's just a little gap. So but that's where we're at right now. Okay. All right, so let's look at um, availability. If you're sleepy, we, we can get a day locked down. So, can we go ahead and look at February? Oh, yeah. Awesome. All right, so how about on Monday, the 5th of February? We're going to do 12. Okay. So maybe he's eating lunch at that time and we can kind of focus on that. Uh -huh. so, oh. All right, so we got, we got it scheduled. I'll start seeing in February. We hope that this video has given you a glimpse of what makes up an initial parent advisor evaluation. All key components were addressed, including parent consent, previous and current medical documentation, the child's mode of communication, parent concerns, and finally the evaluation results. Gwen did an excellent job asking open-ended questions, using active listening, and allowing the parent to help guide the conversation and direct the service plan.